Welcome. This is the October 22nd Jalen Zones production user call. We have Carlo, Nick, Tara, Matthias, H5 visiting, and myself, Michael, so far. And Carlo has some questions about Union FS and Slow Jail Teardown. Carlo, first thing, what are you seeing with Union FS? Uh, so there is a way to allow jail uh, to mount file systems uh, while, uh, you know, for a process within the jail to mount a, a file system. And there is a flag for other file systems like uh, NullFS, but there is uh, no way to delegate, uh, not to delegate, to uh, give that uh, permission for UnionFS. Oh, and I every wanted to file system? Let him finish. Let him finish. It's not every file system, but in uh, for the manual page of jail, you can see like uh, FD, uh, file descriptor files uh, system, FuseFS, NullFS, ProcFS, uh, and some others, but there is no uh, UnionFS uh, flag for that. And uh, I did not find anything that would allow me to uh, mount UnionFS while being inside a jail. I know UnionFS is buggy and has its problems, but I was trying to test uh, some things and, uh, and when, found there is when no you way say to while in the jail, while from like within it or while it's yeah, from, well, from within it, okay. uh, from Good. within it. Jan, I'm sure you have some ideas. Yeah. Um, so LSVFS is the command you can use to list the flags about the different supported file systems, which are loaded from DevFS to NullFS or something. Um, and you can have a list of flag there, uh, for example, synthetic for things like, uh, I think, uh, even uh, UnionFS. Um, and never one if the system can support, or oh, the file system supports delegation to allow jails to mount this file system. And for this to be any resemblance of safe, the file system has to be jail aware. And basically be uh, written to defend against malicious input, as in, for example, a corrupt mounting a corrupted file system. UFS is not written in such a way that an intentionally crafted broken file system is safe to mount. Uh, you can easily panic the system by giving the kernel just the instruction to mount a um, specially just corrupted UFS file system. It's not that it's expected to ever corrupt like that, but that a attacker can do that. And jails are supposed to be a security boundary, not just change route. Um, so um, for the file systems which do have that, jail should have a flag to basically allow this jail each individual file system type um, so that you can slowly open the floodgates. And yeah. Jan, do you recall uh, Union works. specifically Union being is... unavailable? What? Do you recall Union, Union FS? FS? Support that. It, so that's clearly it's not supported. The, the exception is supporting it. Um, so by default, the file system is not jailed. Self-managed. Okay. It has to be host-managed. Ah. Uh, which you can do. For example, you can use an exec dot created hook which runs after the jail has been created. It is at that point an empty persistent jail with no process inside of it, but the jail already exists. So everything the jail command normally mounts exists. And then at that point, it's a good idea to now mount late file systems. Um, so um, if you will need them earlier, you, you can use the uh, prepare hook, which is the earliest, uh, instead of the latest one before stuff starts running inside the jail. But I jokingly just call UnionFS the kernel panic generator. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I know but... that there's an ongoing project, uh, <laughs> the FreeBSD Foundation, which has found both money and a developer. Yes, uh, but Olivier. As far as I know, not uh, produced much output because it hasn't just hasn't had the time to. Um, we spoke in Dublin to improve Union FS so that there's basically it becomes usable for uh, as a reasonable file system and is there, but probably still a bit limited. So that there are 
reasonable configuration where it becomes usable. So Carlo, does it work to do it from the host or does that break your use case? I mean, it's not uh, a big problem. I just wanted to test. Uh, I, I'm creating a simple jail manager for myself, for my needs. And uh, I wanted to test it within a jail so I can just uh, jail remove it if I do something dumb like create a bunch of jails and do not want to clean up uh, manually. And uh, one of the things it does is uh, mount uh, UnionFS uh, like layers uh, for uh, sub jails. So <laughs> I'm not able to test it uh, from within a jail. UnionFS is probably not the mechanism you want to use for that. Even if it worked, it's. I mean, I know I've I found a lot of uh, bugs with with it, and, and I reported uh, if them. You just want it to work. There are two different fuse file systems in Port, which support different flavors of uh, union mounting. Okay, which would those it has be... performance overhead, but it's a lot less buggy because you do the user space uh, to kernel space and back. Uh, Round trip. Can you name those? Oh, I'm losing connection to Google Docs. Thank you, Google. Probably logged me out. La, 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 la. Uh, Jan, uh, can you point me to them or something? Do you remember their names? Ah, okay. Oh, in the chat, FuseFS. Funyun, Funyun, Funyun. Cool. Uh, hopefully, I'm connected. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I clicked the font menu a minute ago. Let's see what happens. At least ah. one of them supports all kinds of fancy uh, metadata rewrites, like changing ownership uh, and so on. And then they're preserved after the fuse departure and shut down and etc. Basically the translation is your mount configuration. You have to define a mapping. <clears throat> okay. Have you used these? Only for a short experiment and it didn't immediately kernel panic unlike normal union of us. Oh Carlo, you've got some homework, but I'm bum. Uh I would yeah I'd love to know more and I confess I have not heard of those, not that I'm expert on much of anything as we discussed earlier so <laughs> so that is cool and uh cool uh did you note those carlo uh, yeah thank you cool yeah so hopefully that provides an answer and we talk tear down let's see uh... you mentioned that uh the Jail remove exits before all references. Da, 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 da. What do you see going on as a user? Okay, so uh, I, as I said, I'm writing a uh, jail manager for myself. And uh, well, after starting mounting file systems uh, uh, as layers, okay. and then I start the uh, jail and uh, in it, uh, etc. RC uh, as the init process within it, and uh, on. When I try to stop the jail, I remove the jail and unmount its file systems. But if I do it too early, that means usually like three to four seconds, uh, it will say that the file systems are busy. The root file system is busy. So I'm guessing that uh, even though jail is removed, something is uh, still having a handle to its file system. Yeah. So uh, the shutdown script, if you run rc.rc .rc shutdown, okay. um, it takes a few seconds just because it gives the services grace time and some services want to do certain things, bring the shutdown down. Uh, I'm not running rc.shutdown, I'm just uh, jail removed the uh, jail ID. So it's uh, kill thing is that, dash nine. So once the processes are gone inside the jail, you will normally not see it, but it's still there and it's stuck in the state called dying, where yeah. uh, with the other kernel subsystem still have pointers to it. And so it cannot be garbage collected. And that can be pretty arbitrary. In theory, it can take forever because if you have something like a stack mount or something like an NFS server, which has been uh, disconnected or something that 
does not yeah. go away on its own. Uh, so is there a, what's my option to like uh, tell the, the jelly to, to wait uh, uh, until it's uh, you can dead? you can run the following. What I like to do is in my uh, exec dot release hook, I um, use mount dash p with def null as the fs tab, so that it will print just without any hints from the real fs tab. Uh, an FS tab representation of all mounted file systems. Filter that for the jail mount point. And okay. then feed the remaining lines which match the jail mount point. So either an exact match or the exact string a slash and then something. So you don't cannot just use a prefix. The, the, if it's not an exact match, it has to be exact match slash then wildcard. Yeah. And uh, Basically, you filter the FS tab lines and then pipe it into U-mount uh, to have it auto-unmount everything with the dependency logic built into mount. Um, I mean, the default order you get it out of uh, the uh, get FS stats uh, system call is also uh, the mount order and the unmount order is always the inverse of that. So you could write it yourself. Yeah. And it's like 100 lines of C if you want to have nice little uh, libj uh, XO output, but uh, you can do it in 10 lines of shell um, and still have it mostly readable. Okay. Did I get that right? You're mounting FS tab as dev null or what? If you have a syntax sample, it's always welcome. Do, 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 uh, and... Three months back in the minutes. Okay. Ah, I'll just make a note of that. And Carlo, is that next question more or less the same? Uh, the so that only one? amounts of file systems if they're hung. If you let the kernel and the jail command auto allocate the jail ID, the dying jail does not block you from creating a new jail with the same name. It just yeah. blocks you from using the same jail ID. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I, I just saw you reordered the creation slow uh, thing. Yeah, put <laughs> that first because that's super uh, tangible. The other thing you can do is, in theory, you can force unmount, which also helps, so that you just uh, put any uh, file descriptors to those file system into revoked state. But that's kind of, it's safe as far as the kernel is concerned, and it's just a bit uh, naughty to user land processes to put their file yeah. descriptors in the uh, I, I own errors only mode. So that I mean, they are already the called with kill nine, their PID, so they should already yeah, be there. Yeah, so at that point, uh, if you uh, have run through kill nine, any remaining processes, you can also force unmounted unless you have anyone sharing that. So, yeah. but at rest, if you are SSH'd into the and in that directory, you will find that LS doesn't work because of dot, and you have to move to an absolute path with CDs to get your shell yeah. working again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the, the next question that was actually the the one we were discussing right now, uh, the super slow. Uh, oh, I can move uh, it. Go jail ahead. stopping is. Uh, just a continuous issue. I mean, it's it's not super annoying, but uh, it is kind of annoying when uh, starting a jail takes like uh, 10 milliseconds and uh, stopping it uh, takes three seconds. Is that with or Cache without fancy file systems? is always more painful if you want a fast system in normal uh, operations. Uh, actually, it's not related to file systems. It's uh, related to VNet uh, destroy. So if it's a jail without VNets, uh, it is actually uh, just as fast yeah. to destroy uh, as to create. Ah, no, thank yeah, you for pointing out the key stack, part. Uh, and the network stack is not designed to optimize the time to drop Turn packets, but to process them as you normally want. So the back pointers aren't kept in silicon zombie because maintaining that all of the time would slow you down a whole lot. Yeah. So what you can do is you can um, try if it helps to bring all interfaces down inside the jail using the J EIF config dash J command. Mm -hmm. You can uh, use the host 
uh, IF config command to list the interface inside the jail and then try to set them all down so that they may eagerly discard the queues because you know that the interfaces are down. Okay. Um, could I um, can I do it uh, only using uh, NetGraph? Can I? Uh, I don't know uh, really if I can uh, drop all the queues with uh, uh, of. Uh, uh, just even NetGraph the... shows up at the end at the network stack interface. Yeah. Unless you're using only NetGraph yeah. sockets, uh, but no, yeah, I it, it's you uh, want EI the actual IP so... stack hooked up. Okay, so I I can just use uh, I have config to drop the uh, queues and then remove. It should be faster, you say. Interesting. And okay. I'm glad you mentioned VNet because that <clears throat> it's a it's a broad statement that uh, teardown is slow, but it actually and it may be worth someone's taking doing a little science of what feet what infrastructure what features what what stuff slows it down significantly what is most efficient so there's that and I, I just out of curiosity you say you're writing a new jail manager is it a rite of passage <laughs> is it uh because other ones are missing features what what what's motivating that uh um a lot of everything we've all done it, uh, it it's okay you're yeah. in the right place we've been there we've been there <laughs> uh well uh I have a few features I'm missing from most of them, and it's uh, usually related to describing uh, the network topology of uh, what you're doing uh, with those jails. And uh, there is a tool uh, for that, which is pretty nice. Uh, uh, it's, I think I mentioned it uh, on my first uh, call for testing. It's uh, Immune's uh, uh, I-M-U-N-E-S. Right, uh, and uh, it's a pretty nice tool, but uh, it uh, is uh, missing a few features uh, I need uh, for myself. Uh, and uh, I mean, I can show you a short. Uh, I can open up my machine and just show you in a minute, like start and stop, and a few scripts how it looks like. Uh, if you want, if everybody is okay, I can do that after the call if you want. Uh, it's gonna be its time. Would everyone like that now or a touch later? It's your call, not mine. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, sure, I can stop sharing. Setting. Let her rip. You ready? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, oh, one second. Pushy, pushy, click, click. Uh, and while sure. you do that, I'll look for the reference you just mentioned. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Oh, yes, but I see the same yes. dog. Oh, no, no, perfect. Nope, I don't see. It. Yes, okay. beautiful. Uh, and the size isn't bad. Good work. Oh, uh, yeah, it's because I can't read the small text. So I usually zoom it in like this for myself. Uh, okay, Whatever so this, works. Uh, I created uh, an example directory uh, in the repository to just uh, uh, show. Uh, uh, its capabilities, wait a second, uh, it's started uh, SH. So I am creating a few nodes. It has uh, the notion of nodes and links, and I'm creating a few nodes. Uh, these are their names. So I have one bridge, one uh, interface, and it's all just uh, calling to a different module, which does the uh, node bring up or tear down. And it takes some arbitrary UCL configuration. It can be JSON or YAML also. Uh, and I'm uh, linking, uh, I'm uh, also uh, creating two jails uh, called J1 and J0 uh, uh, with those configurations and uh, connecting a few links between them. So those jails are connected together. Uh, here you can see that they're Ethernet, one, uh, Ethernet 0 interfaces and Ethernet 1 interfaces are connected to uh, Bridge 0, uh, its link uh, 1 and 2. Uh, and also the uh, uh, EXNet uh, interface I created, uh, uh, it's also going to be created, uh, it's going to be connected to the bridge uh, with link zero. And uh, one second, in uh, examples, uh, here is uh, examples uh, jl0conf. So it's just calling the module uh, that creates jails based on this uh, configuration. It's uh, to uh, EI phase. Uh, interfaces 
And file system has uh, like notion of layers. It's similar to what uh, Docker does with its uh, overlay FS. Uh, it's just uh, 14.1 uh, base that directs that. And after that, uh, it's just a, uh, a directory, which I, I'm, uh, it, it just has these uh, etc, rc.conf and resolve.conf, which, configure, uh, which uh, have a configuration for uh, interface IPs and uh, DNS uh, settings. And volumes is uh, just like in Docker, you have volumes. It's, it's just a nullfs at the end uh, that, that is mounted uh, to any place you want in the jail. And temporary, just uh, if it's uh, false, it will just mount the last layer as the uh, as uh, on top of, uh, you know how you have in UnionFS uh, the below flag? It mounts the uh, directory underneath uh, the one you're targeting. And this will just... Uh, the last one, it will mount it on top, so any change you make uh, is going to be visible inside this directory. Otherwise, it's discarded when you stop the node. Using so which I tool? Can... Using uh, what something... place of UnionFS? Uh, so, so can you... <laughs> you you said you can that? mount like UnionFS. What tool is doing that? No, no, no. It's, uh, oh, it's, uh, it, it, is, it is using UnionFS. Okay. But in Union, UnionFS... <laughs> uh, uh, you have uh, the option below. Yep. Oh, okay. And uh, on the last one, if it's not temporary, it will just mount it uh, as not below. Uh, so I can do something like this. Uh, it, uh, one second. Uh, aha, I need to compile first. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, the init system is saying that uh, the STD out is closed. So. Uh, but it does not matter. I have uh, two jails here, and uh, I can uh, also uh, not that uh, ex base uh, node uh, command j zero uh, shell. Uh, yeah, and I can see those two interfaces I created. Uh, this is within the jail, uh, the node uh, J0. And if I uh, exnet, I can see that I have the interface created uh, on the host that is actually connected to the uh, bridge. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, I will just ping the 10.2.0.2 and it's everything is working. So when I do stop, you will see like startup took I don't know, like uh, 100 milliseconds and stop is actually going to take quite some time. <laughs> and with this uh, device busy message, because I'm trying to unmount the file system while it's still uh, having some uh, handles to it open. But yeah, uh, so the actually the next question I wrote on the, uh, uh, before that, uh, do you have any questions about this? I'm, I think this is enough to just showcase uh, what I did for that. Uh, Any questions for Carlo? And welcome, Alex. I will drop your name in place of VLC. Oh, yeah. And uh, I imagined it as uh, this base, uh, exact base. It's just the system that manages state. It runs uh, nodes, which have uh, uh, what I what did I call it a module specified within, which is just a tool which will handle uh, configuration and start some node. And I created a few nodes uh, which I needed, which is uh, bridges, uh, interfaces, and jails. So these no these modules can be written in any language, and base also can be uh, written in any language. And uh, state is uh, just. Uh, I stopped it now, so when I start it, it's just going to be uh, all the nodes uh, with their configuration and what the uh, module returned. Uh, so it's a configuration and what the uh, module returned as its data uh, of the running node, like JLID interface IDs and stuff like that. So it's designed to be like extendable, let's see. Cool. Any questions for Carlo at this point?
Yeah, I joined a bit late. Um, Hello and welcome, Alex. hola. Uh, what happens when you do JLS? Oh, uh, well, let me start again. Uh, JLS is just those two jails. So uh, inside uh, examples, uh, jail zero, I have, uh, no, it's not there. It's in uh, examples start. Uh, no, uh, actually, the jail name is not given there. Uh, so in uh, the configuration of jail zero, uh, it is mounting this as overlay, uh, not overlay, Mm union. -hmm. above the base jail so it's in examples uh, 0 etc rcconf uh, this is the host name i see and uh from from the from the from the mount table point of view how is the overlay system done uh, it's just okay union so you have a so it's just doing fs okay interesting very interesting yeah it's working because fine which file systems are mount uh, writable and which are uh, read only Uh, so uh, Or at VFS, least not written to. uh, well, uh, one second, it's easier to just show uh, show it and not uh, inspect the system, but uh, it's there uh, mounted uh, in order as below uh, UnionFS, so uh, every layer is mounted uh, after each, uh, so it's first uh, this one mounted, on uh, slash and then tmp xe and then uh, name of the node and after that it's the other layers and uh, the last layer if it's not specified to be uh, temporary it's going to not mount it as below so it's uh, if it's not temporary changes uh, or modifications are going to be visible in the last layer so if you want to change something about layer zero install new packages or something you can uh, well I, I can show you uh, examples stop Uh, well, the, the script, uh, I do not really need to stop everything, but uh, the script just tear down, tears down everything, so it's uh, a bit less of thinking. Uh, so if I do false and start again. Um, Spoth is run. Uh, so, yes, so, ah, okay, but uh, if I go here, I'm not connected to the internet, uh, but you can see in zero now I have a bunch of other uh, directories like uh, var, log, and stuff, and uh, in one it's just etc, rc, and resolve conf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, uh, can I ask how scalable is Union FS? Because I've, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if you watched the uh, the recordings. We were talking about what is an image from a philosophical point of view, and. Um, One of the things when I talked with my friends is, well, they like the idea of layers and, you know, the, the idea of how Docker files, every Mm command that you run is a separate layer. And I'm thinking if we can have something like layers in here. And I don't, I, I wanted to ask how many, like, how many layers did you ever see a stack on top of each other? Is there any performance hits, anything like that? -hmm. I've not tested any of that and Okay. uh, I mean docker file it's interesting but I would not go and create uh, like for each command uh, layer I would rather have some checkpoints Um, I know, and have a right? bunch of commands Yeah, it For sounds union dumb. FS, And... it's the following. It's basically the overhead is at best uh, linear to the depth of your stacking. Uh, but it mostly matters for metadata operations. And uh, even the normal accesses are still going through one, uh, the V node redirection. So we do now have a. Um, In union FS, VFS node wrapping the real one, and you really hope that it does never go out of sync with the real ones uh, of your view because here be dragons, that's this kind of state invalidation is what uh, is behind probably most of the union FS related bugs. Mm -hmm. Um, I see. what you can do is you can use something like refuse union FS, and then you have an at least the fuse overhead, which can be quite noticeable. And Yeah. on top of that, whatever you do within it, that's Yeah. non-trivial. So, um, but the other option is to pay down your uh, layering cost 
at instantiation time once and basically yeah. unpack the tarballs on top of each yeah. other and flatten that out. And then if anything changes, you have to resync that and basically fix it up. But uh, mm -hmm. at runtime, you have no overhead. It's just the setup cost yeah. when you have not yet um, flattened that structure down. And yeah. the other thing with the crazy ZFS uh, mounting tricks I'm describing, at this point, there is no real overhead over just having that many ZFS mounts, which is not much overhead. The downside is that you have to express it within this system and cannot map the normal Docker file semantics with whiteouts to that. Course. It's a different yeah. concept. Yeah. Even if it uh, accomplishes so I, the same thing. So I joined a bit later. What's this written in? Uh, this is in C, but uh, it's uh, it's composed of uh, a few modules, so these can be written in any language. They just take uh, JSON uh, or UCL or uh, YAML as their Actually. configuration input, and they uh, give it out as the running node state. So it's just kept in this uh, run file here because I specified it uh, in here as the path for the state. Actually, and uh, uh -huh. so... Uh, each of these, uh, so let me just show you ex. Uh, let's say jail. Uh, it's called uh, with uh, like a few uh, different. Mm -hmm. It has a few different commands, and for example, start and then the name. And after that, mm -hmm. you give it a configuration uh, as, uh, for example, JSON. Uh, and mm -hmm. I pass it in here as uh, JSON data, not as a file, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bit dumb. But uh, I tested, uh, I think, 512 kilobytes uh, is able to be passed as arguments uh, yeah. to exec, uh, and it works. You can bump uh, that if you really need it. Yeah, but uh, I needed uh, to pass it like that because uh, initially I passed it in uh, through standard input, but for command, mm -hmm. command which is called CMD, uh, the base actually execs uh, the uh, module so I cannot pass it in as uh, standard input, uh, the configuration. Uh, so and, I just pass it in um, as arguments. You can and, uh, pass it as a file descriptor. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, for this, it's uh, just uh, given the configuration on startup, and it returns some uh, data. And on stop, it uh, just uh, assumes it's going, going to get the configuration and uh, its data. It, Give, it gave you when you started it. And also endpoint is used uh, to connect uh, to other nodes. Uh, so it's using NetGraph, uh, in my case, uh, to connect to other nodes. So it's going to specify like uh, uh, NetGraph address and the hook name. Mm -hmm. And the system knows That's how to connect those. Very nice, very impressive. And uh, these modules can be written in anything. I plan on uh, uh, releasing it uh, for other people to poke around and you know <laughs> add stuff they need. Uh, I just wanted to add a few more things I need first and then give it to everyone. Nice. Yeah. Uh, now also the hardest the, part, the do you have a name? Uh, no, it's uh, EX uh, because I have a bunch of uh, two letter named projects uh, and this is the latest one that has two letters, uh, but uh, I do not have a name. I can change it easily. If I anyone mean, that's has an editor, better. is it not? Uh, is it? I'm, X, I, I EX editor? Maybe type which ex right there. Oh, you might get your own, but anyway. Oh, <laughs> it is. Nah. Yeah. So <laughs> there's J for jail and EJ, which is also A, go in Latvian would be a lovely name, EJ. <laughs> Unless okay. there's an editor named that, but go for it. Find a cool name. I don't know. Yeah, thank you for the. Uh, maybe RM. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, maybe power off. Uh... <laughs> Uh, also, uh, the thing you mentioned about uh, how Dockerfile creates uh, layers uh, for its file system. Yeah. Uh, I planned on creating a, a small utility that would, uh, you see how I have uh, here, this specification of layers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I would have something parse a file that is similar to Dockerfile or maybe even the same, mm -hmm. and then uh, just create, uh, spit, spit out a list of layers it created somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can, you know, like uh, create a, uh, or I don't know what to call it, uh, compile the file and get uh, a list of uh, mm -hmm. layers that you can use inside your 
uh, nodes. Yeah. And uh, I plan on uh, creating, uh, well, let me, I'm going to use Nano because I haven't, I don't know, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, I can show you in my to-do. I have uh, a few missing things here. Uh, and I plan on uh, adding Beehive before I uh, release <coughs> Jailed it. or not jailed? Uh, well, uh, the ex.base in this case is not jailed, so it's going to run uh, the ex.beehive not jailed. But if you manage to run the ex.base inside the jail, it's going to run it <laughs> jailed. Uh, so I do not want to, you know, like uh, have it manage another jail and jails within it. But rather, if you want to manage it within a jail, you would just run it within a jail. Uh, it was a bit easier to write because, I mean, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's like 2,000 lines of C. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's a bit more. I don't know why it's saying this. Okay, it's 3,000. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, for Beehive, I also wanted to have support for, you know, uh, how I have layers. I would uh, like to expose them uh, to the uh, to the VM uh, directly and not have it uh, be like a uh, disk file. And uh, 9P would be useful for that, but uh, I don't think it's uh, yet in 14. And I'm not sure it's going to be inside 14. I'm not sure about that, though. So this last thing is going to have to wait for uh, 15. That's a good question on 14, what, two? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this leads me to my uh, next question I wrote in the agenda, actually. Oh. Uh, so Are you done sharing or do you want to keep adding? Yeah, no, you, you can uh, take a look. Okay, so I'll get us back to the agenda. Let's see, I'll push some buttons. Do, 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 do. Clicky, clicky. Boom. So, package, as in package base or package in general? Uh, the package command. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it has uh, some state, uh, like it has a SQLite uh, database that it's uh, holding for its information, what's installed and what's not. And uh, so the problem is uh, if I install two packages, one after the other, uh, and uh, have uh, a, a layer for each of them, I cannot reorder, reorder those uh, layers because uh, it, they are modifying the uh, same files, uh, specifically the database for the PKG. Uh, and I don't think there is a way around that. Uh, I was thinking on installing uh, files and then just stripping out uh, PKG from the layer and having the layers be like pure programs that you overlay on top of your uh, system. So if you want, for example, Git, you would just uh, add a layer that adds Git to your uh, jail. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if there is an easy way to do it uh, with current tools that exist. Yeah, it becomes a bit uh, hard if you try to break up the ports or packages uh, into steps. So you, the uh, most extreme part of probably each package is its own overlay or something. That yeah. couldn't really scale. On the easier side of things, you would just maybe te textually include the instructions to build multiple or install multiple packages. Then yeah. uh, you have just one layer for all your packages, and that's probably the same default, uh, which you would have to have a good reason to diverge from. But of course, tools should support arbitrary layers. Yeah. I mean, uh, my usual approach is to install everything to a, I have a, like uh, the uh, OS base layer, the base.rxz that is extracted. And after that, I, that I create a layer that, where I install uh, every program I might need and then mount it as a layer uh, to each of my jails because it's not going to hurt them to have a few extra tools they're not going to use. Uh, but it would be nice to have like, uh, 
you know, where you could just uh, pick uh, which programs you want uh, inside which uh, jail and uh, have them be uh, like layers. I mean, there are also hacks like using the cp-r flag to have cp symlink files instead of uh, copying them and so that you can use the recursive cp to copy the directories but uh, link the files symbolically and so on so that you can easily quickly create fake uh, symlink forests but here be dragons it's not that you will kernel panic the system it's just that you will wish uh, You've never done it because you're lost in your own maze. Yeah. Yeah, it You sounds just uh, uh, over like a nightmare control to over manage. that. Uh, if you completely basically have only your tooling have right access at early startup to the symlink maze, it may work, but it requires some. Yeah, it requires requires purely using automation. Yeah, I, I would rather, rather write uh, a tool that composes uh, layers uh, like Docker file. Uh... and uh, use that instead of trying to manage If everything. if you do it well, you you can't beat the just pure data movement speed, Yeah. and because some things like packages are normally quite effectively compressed, you, oftentimes this happens to be CPU bound unless you have a modern CPU and an old laptop hard disk, um, because you will either lose time doing lots of met metadata operations on tiny files or decompressing big blobs. And I mean, you can do some things like, for example, fetch the packages, decompress them, and generate your own uncompressed repository in the local file system, which vastly uh, reduces the time for things like package based down to like 10, 13 seconds. And most of that is lost uh, indexing the certificates if you have a fast system. But because now you're just reading from an as at four compressed UFS uh, snapshot you mounted into your jail uh, or a clone. Um, and that's a lot faster than ZSTD or even worse, LZMA decompression. But Okay. the defaults for normal package management where the expensive Yeah. thing to safeguard is uh, both By the user bandwidth and uh, CDN capacity and bandwidth and not install time. Yeah. So, um, or the install time is for the average user is optimized by um, carefully using the shared resources instead of committing to just maximum bandwidth data movement. So you, do you see a promised land where we could have a whole bunch of user configured layers that are perhaps arbitrarily re arrangeable between jail boots and just say, hey, okay, I want it this way, I want it this way, and I Yep. guess I wouldn't care if the jail's torn down, okay? <laughs> Yeah, you can do it with just ZFS as long as you use it on a per mount point basis. Yeah, that's Otherwise, true. you would have to uh, use some like Potman or and Builder to create the tarballs and unpack them again. And or XZ has the OCI tar command. Oh, yeah, the point Uh, that being also packages, works. your friends have a, some merger of package and ZFS in a No, handy the tool idea that's regardless is of that your jail you. manager, etc. But I'm just babbling. What I would like to see is that you don't go through the package manager on every start because you're not going to get it that fast that you want to do it like that. Instead, you want to have it within a second or so, create the, or five at most, um, just do it, uh, uh, unpack it. But I don't see where we will get it down to less than 20 or 30 seconds. For the first time startup and afterward, it should just confirm if some snapshot exists And that should take more like microseconds than milliseconds. Um, so that we just check if some checks, uh, some uh, marker exists, for example, a ZFS snapshot. And if it exists, those whole expensive one-time steps are skipped. So you basically check if you, the right uh, checksum exists, uh, sorry, the right snapshot exists and has the expected origin if it's a clone. And that's very quick to validate. And then you skip over the expensive step instead of doing it every time. You only do that when you discover that 
the state on in the file system is out of sync. And that way you get your jail startup time despite all of the provisioning into half a second or so on cheap SATA SSD reasonable power CPU. Reach. Cool. So yeah, and that's with just shell scripting uh, in jail.conf. Um, you could rip, rip out a few pieces of code, rewrite them in C, and that would be even faster. Mm. But as long as it stays below a second for starting the jail, the moment you introduce VNet and things like Slack and DHCP, your network startup time is going to dominate and you're only chasing diminishing returns. If you use pure alias uh, jails or uh, even inherit jails and don't uh, virtualize the network, okay, then you can avoid the cost and then it still makes sense. Hey. Matthias, you've been quiet. Uh, it sounds like you've got some questions. Uh, you have been uh, jailing Beehive, and how's that treating you? And yeah. are you finding that you're dependent on a device? What is this thing? So I, I wasn't clear. Uh, so you were um, you, you did ask uh, Carlo about um, when he was mentioning Beehive, whether it was jailed Beehive or uh, uh, or not. And uh, I thought then probably someone here would have some experience with GLB Hive. I do not. I have only tried the Hive uh, directly on the host. And that's okay. where I've been having trouble with this. Uh, I'm in trouble. Uh, I will did, jump in uh, and say that Chris M has recently posted all his scripts from EuroBSDCon where he talked quite a bit about uh, jailing beehive if you look at the uh, beehive doc you will find a link to those Just okay saying. yeah because he okay. put a bunch of time into it so let's not reinvent uh, that DMT has also had a 3.1 release who has oh B oh yes his own correct that came up too so all sorts of things to celebrate there okay Okay, so uh, and it looks like you shared the information on the OSI OCI calls. Are they on hold right now because Doug is on vacation, or are they back? Uh, oh, Monday. The, 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 Doug is, yeah, they started again uh, yesterday. Oh, how did that go? And so that's now Mondays. Okay, so eleven thirty Eastern USA Eastern. I'm guessing so. Yeah, oh boy, and bi-weekly, so it takes a whole bunch of acrobatics. And then if you have a holiday, do you continue on the original schedule or do you adjust and push it down? I tried that. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> so that would be 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Youch. Tara, did you attend that? You've been very active with all that wonderfulness. No, and unfortunately, I just discovered the new time clashes with some medical appointments. Okay. Uh, but I, even the Thursday, the, the, the Tuesday one was clashing with another appointment. So, yeah, I'll try, but <clears throat> that'll be tricky. But okay, cool. I hope those are productive. So, that Matthias, did you join that call and how did it go? And is it recorded? I did. So, I did. It was recorded. Uh, Doug uh, was still on his uh, vacation, so he did not join, but we had Noor, uh, we had Alicia. Oh, cool. Great. Uh, and uh, we had Ed Mast and uh, Samuel Carp. So quite a, a nice uh, lineup. Um, I think it was mostly about um, gathering uh, feedback uh, around the, the, the OCI jail, uh, OCI container slash jail uh, initiative. Uh, I'm afraid I did hug quite a lot of the time uh, sh giving a quick uh, a quick um, demo of uh, what I've been doing with uh, as part of that uh, yeah. well, which I have also linked down there um, so and answering questions about that uh, and uh, yeah, so in two weeks time, it should be a, a little bit more, uh, um, there should be more flesh to it, I think. Cool. Thanks for that update. 
I am flattered there are now many calls showing up with recordings and goodies. What a nice precedent. Um, and what, thank what is, you for uh, formatting uh, the, your text here, whoever did that. Go ahead. Yeah, no, sorry, uh, Tara, there is uh, on, the, on the GitHub, there is an invite. Oh, yeah, I, I've seen it. Thank you very much. Cool. Let's see. H5, TN32, who I think we're talking to already. Uh, it looks like Alex dropped off, unless that's H5. Any other questions, especially from new people? Okay, we covered a lot of ground. Um, uh, Offline, let's see, Anshadeg, you made a comment that you love that Immunes tool, was it? Uh, what can you tell us about what it does for someone who has just, I don't know, used it in a different context? Oh, Immunes, yes. Immunes um, or something. Yeah, so Immunes is actually very cool. Uh, it's, it's made by one of the universities, and I don't remember which one. Uh, it's actually, the idea was initially back, if you look at the history is Cisco had this very shitty tool called packet tracer, yeah. which is like an emulator for, uh, okay. networking. It, it is the worst thing a network engineer can see at the first month of their training, okay. uh, just like everything right. else that is Cisco to be more specific. Write a passage. Um, okay. And people were like, hey, why are you doing emulation? They're like, well, we can't give them actual software, you know, because licensing and other Cisco crap. And then people were like, hey, can we build a virtual network that is actually real computers? And they're like, yeah, FreeBSD jails. And oh, Immunes okay. uses FreeBSD jails where you're oh, like, no kidding. Here's a, yeah, so like, here's a computer. Here's the computer. <laughs> Connect this computer to that computer. And like that's literally what it does using jails and uh, VNet. And they've been using VNet before it even was cool. in production. Like no before kidding. it even was okay. Generic. Yeah. I actually taught networking using Immunes. And it was one of the best courses that we've ever done because we usually got to like 500 machines very easily. I mean, 500 AKA emulated machines, which were all, you know, free BSD jails at the end of the day. They also added some support for virtual machines. So if you want to run like Linux and stuff, so it would use, um, I think initially it was Zen, then they moved to Beehive, but I haven't followed that part much. But the real cool part of it is that it's it's the, the management system is based on uh, is based on um, uh, you know graphs like the one that you see below, right? right. So whenever you create a router, it creates a jail that does routing. Whenever you create a bridge, it does it creates a bridge, either net graph or I think it's net graph. Yeah, it's all in net graph. Yes, so it creates a net graph bridge. So it's it's one of the coolest tools ever to to understand how networking works. Um, it's been around That's for a while. Amazing. Oh, four. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah, really amazing. Years? Yeah, yeah Wait, because I, I wanted to simulate some big stun stuff. And... Yep. Wow. Yep. Okay, I yep. got the yep. answer. Yes. And because it integrates very nice with NetGraph, so a couple of while, a while ago, we were trying to uh, test router OS for a customer. And uh, we were like, hey, we can do the desktops as free BSD jails and the routers as a beehive running router OS. So like you can even, if if you have a proper router, <laughs> AKA not Cisco crap, uh, because, then you can also- geez, there might be a um, listener from Cisco. I don't care to get okay. your shit together, people. Mm -hmm. SSH should just work. I don't need to configure a license for SSH. So yeah, so that's one of my uh, nice stories okay. about Immunes. It, 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 it works nicely. Yeah, it's a bit outdated. If you go to the downloads, you would see that it's using like previous versions of FreeBSD. I don't know why they're having a hard time doing the maintainership. Like they're using 13.2 at the moment, right? Uh, sorry, 12.3. Like, it's, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe they need help. I mean, it's it's an amazing teaching utility. I'll, I'll just say that. It's an amazing teaching utility. That's cool. Um, do we know anyone over there? 
Um, their GitHub <laughs> is pretty active in the sense oh, we have that... a link for that? Let's see. Immunes. Yeah, it's and... github.com slash immunes. Yes. Well, there you go. Uh, uh... Yeah, it's, it's pretty active in the sense that, uh, you know, if you open an issue or anything like that, they would answer very easily, you know, very fast and everything. Uh, and also, uh, I, I can see updates in the graphical software a lot because I follow them. Like, the, there's always updates to the, you know, you software go. parts of things. Okay. Yeah. And finally, what else did I want to oh, add? Because I had, uh, yeah. So that's 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 one of the nice stories. Okay. I'm, Has I'm anyone trying heard to remember of this one. Go ahead, Antony, but I'll bring it up while you're doing that. GMS three does, does something similar. So yeah, they're like, oh, here's a router VM. Here's a Sigma Bob. VM. Yeah, here's a VM. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see, documentation software is an intro. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. There is GNS three as well. It's it's very nice. It's way better than Packet Tracer. Let's say that. Uh, that was the Cisco to, to... one. Yeah, Packet Tracer was the Cisco one. Oh, yes. look, gee, looks very familiar to what we just described. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm not actually sure if they're doing like in GNS because sometimes it feels like they like they're doing emulation. Sometimes it feels like they're doing, um, you know, like actual containers. So it's really not clear how things are working in in GNS today. Maybe there's like a uh, what do you call that? Like a, uh, I I know they had, they had like a plugin system. Maybe that's also a thing. You know, so I'm I'm kind of confused there. But um, if if you're teaching networking, not like vendor yeah exactly like actual, yeah. yeah no kidding uh so yeah. why aren't these getting more attention those these both sound pretty cool just saying no gns3 is very famous okay well yeah gns3 in the network in world is very famous are nerdy yeah. BSD and it's and it's always the same path like people go to take their ccna and then yeah. they learn that packet tracer has nothing to do with the real life they're looking for an alternative and then they get gns3 so that's okay. usually the path yeah, and some people, because my story with it was someone asked me because I configured uh, OpenBSD as a router for a for a for a friend's data center. Yeah, and he's like, "Can I emulate that in GNS?" I'm like, "I don't know." And then we looked up and we found Immunes. That was like a hmm. decade ago. Well, We've been okay. using. Okay, cool. Since. I, I can't say good enough things. Let me put it that way about Immunes. Like it's, so, it sounds like we might want to update it to the latest. And greatest. Yeah, I, as far as I remember, they in, needed in help in yeah. they needed help in their um, uh, build process. So they're okay. like the, the I, situation would be like they maintain the, the 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 tickle software, which is the graphical interface, and then we would basically like write a write a script that hey, there's a new FreeBSD, run the script. It will it should automatically generate a new Immunes sure. version. Based. So that would be the ideal model, basically. Hmm. Cool and take care, TN3270. And uh, so this one is a bunch of Python. What is yes, immune immunus written in uh, TCL? Oh, okay, cool. Tickle, yeah, Tickle. very old school. TCL, yeah, Python. Uh, and oh, and what's the license? I can't help but notice this is GPLv3. Uh, Tickle, I think. Think well, might have been no the, the the goodies on GitHub. Let's go find a license. Sorry, I didn't do that a second ago. Yeah, do, 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 I do, don't do. remember. And no docs. I don't want to replace a link with a name. Um, copyright. There we go. Here's a file. Okay. Are we racing? One, We're racing. Two. It looks like BSD. The distribution must. Yeah, look. Yeah, BSD. Two plus BSD. Okay, TCL eighty nine point seven percent. Copyright. Boom. Okay. Yeah. All righty then. That uh, is kind of cool. And if we go to the main level, let's see when it was last tickled, even though some people get ridiculously hung up on how recently something was modified. It was... Oh, yesterday. Last week two months ago well, i'm seeing last week on this particular bit of it but that's cool okay love yep. it got it 
that is one to watch, especially for him. People who keep talking about training and education and goodies. And I sure like that idea, especially the fact that you can prototype a massive network on your dinky laptop and push out to the real world. Thanks to the miraculous things from, say, containers and hypervisors. Okay. Yeah, and and the, another thing is is that is that um, I don't think that even they have the idea of doing that. Maybe they're like I not thought. in the inner circle of FreeBSD, yeah. where we can have Linux jails on ImmuneS for the parts of people who want to have Linux as an operating system. They're using the emulation layer because that would make a lot of sense, honestly. True, but they'd be at the mercy of System D, which wouldn't quite work in a jail. Um, would it? No, no, you not could necessarily. Yeah, they could unique yeah. Uh, environments. Uh, yeah. including Linux, but the problem is that the networking mm -hmm. demons exercise the outer edges of Netlink, uh, so you would find that the system call emulation does not include things like network names, spaces, and so on. So it yeah, works the, the, for the, the, networking, there are... but if you try to do fancy yeah. routing tricks in a Linux jail, you will find out that while FreeBSD itself may be able to do it, the Linux way is not... Is the Linux user land tools expecting to modify the inner workings of the Linux kernel mm -hmm. won't be happy with the more or less good enough re-implementation of that API in FreeBSD or just and the, report that FreeBSD cleanly reported that this feature is not available. And the foundation has done some has done some good work in the in the in that space. For example, there were a lot of ePoll um, uh, types that we did not support, and they've added those. So like now you can run nginx, Linux as nginx, which we couldn't do like two years ago. So that's that's kind of a good thing that we see. Uh, I even tested it on current a couple of weeks ago, where I ran. Uh, I think it was uh, Void uh, on on my on my Linux jail, and it it worked all fine. Yeah, yeah. Jan, we've done Alpine, we've done Gen two. Gen two is the nicest, to, to be honest, because everything is very deeply documented uh, compared to Void and Alpine. Although Alpine is tiny, it's not like they need a lot of documentation anyway. Yeah. No. So <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 very much. It could it could be a very much nice integration of having Linux jails with ImmuneS, you know. Yeah. Sure. Once you have this CC cluster up and running, not necessarily. Gen two has actually added binary packages. Uh, who would have ever believed that? Wait, what? Yeah, they're no way. Yes, who's following so, whose example, etc. Like their own. Uh, yeah, so they're like, you know, we can have source and package. I mean, FreeBSD has been doing that for what two decades now. So they actually added as long as the use flags, same as we have in Free FreeBSD, you know, the use flags of a package is the same, then it will download the binary package. Otherwise, you will compile it. And uh, that, that's been very nice to see on, on Gentoo. Uh, it, it might be one of the best systems to run ZFS on because you just do emerge open ZFS and you're done. It's every, everything is now ready for you to have a uh, root on. Oh, yeah, that's the other beauty of it is that the maintainers of OpenZFS on Gentoo are very picky about versioning in a good way. So they're like, okay. the 2, 2, 3 came out, I think, or 2, 2, 3 came out. They're like, okay, this isn't testing. This is not production ready because we're actually testing it in the Gentoo cluster. It might take like six weeks and then they put it in production. So they've been doing some good work there. And uh, more importantly, the, the, the because it's, uh, it's do-it-yourself operating system uh the installer does not fight with you whenever you're installing the system i mean there is no installer technically right you're just doing things like you know unpackaging a tarball and installing grub manually and all of that so it's really it's really nice uh, system to to maintain all of that basically long story short i think is one of the best systems to have zfs on i mean out of everything that we've tried that's interesting yeah that's great. If only there was a conference. Gentoo, right? Yes, G E N T O O. Yes. Yeah. Uh, wait to quote uh, Futurama now with packages. That was a Bachelor Chow reference. Did anyone get it? Anyone? The the, the non American did. I don't remember that exact quote. Uh, bachelor do. chow now with favor <laughs> oh yes that and that and that's true okay, okay. 
Uh, call it a Portland. Contact your congressman if you don't like this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, other ideas, questions, concerns, funny jokes. And I do have a funny joke. Oh my gosh, the Run DMC logo that's been repurposed by many projects, including perhaps EFS shortly. Is Arial Black as a font? Really? Really? It runs that, EFS, you mean? Is, run that, did DMC, make... the, the one, well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't look at the computer to the left of me, whatever you do. But um, the the Run DMC thing is Arial Black. That's not the font I expected from that, but that's okay. Anyway, or it's really close to Arial Black. Maybe a knockoff. Other questions, oh, I just, concerns? Yes, you just. I'll just, I'll just add news. my. Yes. No, not, oh. I mean, yeah, sure, much news, but I don't want to uh, talk about them for hours. I just finally mm -hmm. found the proper way of doing e-pairs, uh, which is, I'll just paste the code directly into the Please. document. Maybe it would be someone for, it would be useful for someone until I merge it into, uh, uh, you know, into GitHub. I'll just. Oh, is that this. the one you mentioned? I can reformat as you like. Is that the one you mentioned in uh, a certain chat contraption? Console. Yes. So basically, the idea is, Jailer has always created UUIDs for 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 jails because I just like having that there. Okay. This is not an actual UUID. It's just the first, yeah. I think, uh, sixteen bit. yeah. bits. Yeah. yeah, and the bridge is a bridge. The vnet is the same. And my idea was. Uh, the the recruiting. interface names in e pairs would be J, the UUID EP for e pair, and then an integer number for because I have jails that are attached to multiple bridges. So you know zero B one B two B depending on how many interfaces you have in a jail, because I have jails who are connected to the public internet and to the internal network. So I have you know two. Two, two interfaces there. Um, long story short, this seems this seems like a nice hack. E pair equals E pair create, so it will be a random E pair number. It could be zero, could be hundred. We don't care. We save that, and then we rename the E pair A part, and then we rename the E pair B part thanks to the ampersand A, which means delete the last A from the E pair name, uh, and then we rename that too. Uh, I like this model. It's a bit hacky, but I don't think that there's a problem with it. I, I stress tested, like created, you know, hundreds of jails, shut them down, do them, do them concurrently and all of that. And I haven't had a, I haven't had a single issue. Does it uh, basically. pass all yawn correctness tests? Uh, well, yawn liked it, which, which is already a good indicator. And another thing I added later on uh, at, at, at today before I took my nap was <laughs> was the following. If I wanted to also uh, support the DHCP properly, which is this is snippet. God, I hate you, Google Docs. And let's do where is it? Consolas, non bold. Yeah, there we go. Which is right after the jail is created. I set its Ethernet to a static MAC address. Those are generated um, when the jail is created. It's uh, uh, the first three uh, uh, bits, bytes. Bytes, yeah. The first three bytes are the FreeBSD Foundations allocation, and the last three bytes are randomly generated. And then if you're using DHCP, it would run DH client, and then it would run, you know, ETCRC, the system boots all fine. So with, with those two combinations, I now have a very clear separation between operator and developer. Now the operator is managing, you know, networking and interfaces and MAC addresses and all of that. And the developer is just you know, connecting to the jail, basically, that's it. So, uh, or, or or hopefully in the future, creating the jail using some kind of a formula. Um, and Jan, do you think there's an issue in this? Because, I mean, I tested those as much as I can. I haven't had half of the Unicast Mac, wait, half of the Unicast Mac addresses are reserved for local allocation. What? The, uh, oh, so the first I see what you mean. So the lowest two bits of the first byte in a MAC address specify the set bit one is if it's locally administered or globally allocated. Uh, so, and the bit zero uh, is if it's unicast or multicast. The Wikipedia article for it has a little visualization. Uh, so mm -hmm. basically the lower nibble of the first byte uh, contains in its lower two bits the uh, that information, and if you 
take that uh, and just say it's a locally administered uh, yeah. MAC address, then you get to decide what that means uh, locally to you. And you have 46 bits to play with, which means because with just 24 bits, you kind of shouldn't be using, because if you're using the FreeBSD prefix, the default one, or another of the default ones of 23 bits, uh, sorry, 24 bits, have at least you never 24 bits, and if you just randomly allocate, the birthday paradox will get you. But, but wait, that's in the first, but I never modified the first. The first is always 589CFC. Or did I miss something, right? That's the first bit of the first octet. And I never well, modified yeah, the first octet. Zero, the lowest one. I see what you mean. Okay. I see what you mean. Okay. Okay, now I see what you mean. Okay. So we are at, let's see, uh, it's five, eight, and eight is unicast individual. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I like this. It's it, it works very much properly. I'll also modify Jailer so it does this. From now on, I'll also notify my 10 users so, <laughs> so they're aware of the situation. And finally, we, I've been doing like the DH client and setting the IP address in the jail, which I always hated, but that was like a fast hack. And now I'm finally able to uh, uh, have it in, uh, what's his name, in, in the jail conf directly. Too much noise right now for using the mic. Oh, no worries. So, yeah. Oh, right. Uh -oh. He's, in, he's in a hackerspace or something cool. Lucky you. I wish we yeah. had the proper hackerspace. Uh, balls in your court. Anyway. Anyway, so, that was my rant. Nice. Okay. Anything else, gang? All is good. All is good. Yep. It is 32 after over uh -oh. there and over here. Give me a second. Um... Yeah, Jan. <clears throat> Anything else, Matthias? Nick? Nope, oh, all good. Cool. Nick, I'd love to talk to you a few moments after the event, after this goodness, if that's okay. Um, let's see, I have... Work call. I'll, I can call you directly okay. oh, yeah. a little later this afternoon. No after. worries. Okay, cool. That'd be great. Thank you. All right, cool. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, Mike. Okay, yeah. well, everyone, uh, thank you so, so much. We had some great conversations, and I'm curious, does anyone want oh. the honors? Yes, Jan, you have something? No, let's do that later. Okay. Cool. And I'll do the honors. Oh, I just made a run ZFS image based on a proper... SVG. Yes, sir. Entrenig letter rip. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.